Alkanes are the simplest of the hydrocarbons. Organic molecules containing only single bonds are called saturated hydrocarbons. Methane is the simplest alkane, one carbon and four hydrogens. The carbon connected by a single bond to another carbon gives us ethane, propane for three carbons in a row, and butane for four carbons. The thing to notice about alkanes is that the compounds differ by a carbon and two hydrogens. Keep adding a CH2, you create a homologous series. You lengthen the chain, changing not only its name, but its physical and chemical properties. There are some rules for naming hydrocarbons. They get more complicated as we proceed through this unit, so a solid understanding of the basics is essential at this point. Similar to the naming of molecular compounds, the number of carbon atoms in a single row is identified by the root name. The suffix ane follows the root name identifying the compound as an alkane. So methane for one carbon alkane, ethane for two carbon alkane, heptane, octane, nonane, and so on. You don't need to go past 10 in this course. The empirical molecular formula for methane, ethane, propane, butane are shown here. Can you see a pattern developing? Now I said earlier that the alkanes increase by a CH2 at a time. Add a CH2 to CH4 and you get two carbons now and six hydrogens or C2H6. A general molecular formula for alkanes is then CnH2n plus 2, where n is the number of carbon atoms. You can fairly quickly derive the molecular formula for any alkane. Nonane, which has nine carbons, would be C9H20. Empirical molecular formulas do have limitations. For example, the formula for pentane is indeed C5H12. But is C5H12 always the formula for pentane? All the formula shows us is that there are 5 carbon atoms in this molecule and 12 hydrogen atoms. If we assume all 5 carbons are in a row, then we do indeed have pentane. But the same formula can be written for different structures altogether. We call these different structures with the same molecular formula structural isomers. The expanded molecular formula gives us more information about the structure. It shows the groupings of atoms and any chains coming off of the row of carbons by way of brackets. In this case, a CH3 side group is shown attached to the second carbon. Although detailed and communicating clearly where any branch chains are, the structural formula is cumbersome and time-consuming to have to draw. The condensed structural formula shows the bonds between the carbons and not between the carbons and hydrogens. This is because there can only be single bond between the carbon and hydrogen atoms and so are assumed to be there in the condensed structural formula. The line structural formula, sometimes referred to simply as the line diagram, assumes that a carbon atom is at every endpoint, bend, and intersection, and that an appropriate number of hydrogen atoms are attached to each carbon atom to give it its four bonds. We'll use this condensed structural formula as an example of naming alkanes. We already know that the four carbons in a row makes this compound here butane but the side branch connected to the second carbon atom makes this compound not simply butane. Side branches, or substituent groups, or more commonly side groups, are attached to the longest chain of carbon atoms. And side groups based on alkanes are called alkyl groups. You'll be happy to know that the only type of side groups you'll have to deal with in this course are alkyl groups. The alkyl group shown here is a methyl group. As you might guess, we're using the same root names as before, only instead of the suffix "-ane", we add "-il". This is an ethyl group attached to the butane compound. However, you must remember that when naming hydrocarbons, the root name considers the largest number of carbons in a row, and it doesn't always have to be a straight row. 
So this compound is a pentane compound with a methyl group attached to the middle carbon. The prefix methyl in this example is already attached to the root and suffix butane to become methyl butane. What if the methyl group were attached to the third carbon? It would still be methyl butane, the exact same compound only seen from behind. Attached to the first or fourth carbon, we have pentane, so methyl butane has only one structure. To be consistent with your text and to limit ambiguity, I will use carbon numbering for all side chains. If we attach numbers to each carbon in the main chain so that carbon number one is closest to the nearest side group, the carbon number with the side group attached precedes the side group prefix with a dash. So we end up with 2-methyl-butane. This is hexane with a methyl group at the second carbon atom and an ethyl group at the third. We name this 3-ethyl-2-methyl-hexane instead of 2-methyl-3-ethyl-hexane because the side group prefixes are listed in alphabetical order and not the order they appear along the main chain. This has a methyl group at the second carbon and at the third. If the side groups are the same, don't write 2-methyl-3-methyl-hexane. Use the di, tri, tetra prefixes before the branch prefix. Note the comma between the numbers. The dies, tries, and tetras, and so forth are not part of the alphabetical order of writing things.